What are you doing out here? I am out here protesting the fact that uh, I cannot get in the water by myself, stay away from people, enjoy the ocean, surf, dive, and swim. So what do you protest? I mean, I'm protest protesting the fact that, for one, the government is, uh, our local governments are not allowing us to enjoy the things we like to do, but are allowing other people, like people behind me, uh, walk the streets, jog, bike, and be uh, within close proximity to each other, which is dangerous. But they won't let you go out and catch a wave. No, I can't go catch a wave. No, that's illegal. And I will get a thousand dollar fine or go to jail. And what have your friends in the surfing community have been saying? Uh, well, majority of my friends think it's a complete load of uh, horse shit. Excuse my language. But then I've seen a lot of people in the surf community that are just laying down and taking it and they don't think it's a big deal. Just getting their rights stripped of them. Are you surprised that the surfing community is just falling back and just waiting? Uh, yeah, I'm very surprised. I think if it was the surf community of years ago, they would be like rock and roll and, you know, screw this. But nowadays there's just a bunch, you know, it's it's lame. And everybody's just, no, oh, whatever, you know, I just, I won't surf for a couple weeks or a couple months. Uh, clearly you don't like to surf that much if that's your MO. Are you surprised that people are not to find this and just going out there anyways and catching waves? Uh, well, that was for at first happening, but you know, I'm not going out because if I get hit with a thousand dollars, that's a, uh, you know, that I, I, I can't work right now. I can't work, I can't surf, I can't do much. So I don't want to lose a thousand dollars. So how long are you going to ride this thing out? Uh, I'll be out here, you know, weather's supposed to be crappy, but hey, weather's good. I don't, I can't work, I can't surf. Might as well bitch about it. I mean, are you going to go to another city that has a beach open? Oh, well, yes, I might go to, you know, far northern California, Oregon, uh, where I can surf. You can't go to Mexico, you'll get yanked out of the water there. Uh, so we're on the same level as Mexico. Oh, so Mexico has the waters closed also. Yeah, my friend was telling me he saw a video of people getting yanked out of the water there. I don't want to go to Mexican jail. <laughs> so, and, and you hear Oregon is, is open for business? No, water? but it's just far more sparsely populated. Uh, I highly doubt they're monitoring the beaches like they would here in Southern California, especially San Diego. We have zero beaches open right now. Zero. Did you ever think you ever see that? Uh, no, I did not think it would get to the point it did. And uh, also a little ammunition. Hopefully you air this. Guy just came by. There were 8,000 travelers per day from Wuhan or mainland China since mid-November when this started, okay? So uh, it's been here for a while. This is completely, in my opinion, over-exaggerated. And uh, regardless, this is not gonna help the situation. It's gonna make people depressed. It's gonna make people not know what to do. I'm on the side of the road. I've never even protested before. I'm losing my mind. Let me go surfing. Anything else? Uh, yeah, wait, really quick. This is Tommy's Can't Surf right here. And then let me grab my other one. Because this is ridiculous. This is Kim Prather. It's a kook. Kim Prather is a local to Scripps Oceanic uh, Institute. She said that through water bubbles and sea breeze, COVID-19 can be spread with zero proof or anything. That's a hypothesis. That is not a proven scientific statement and the city is running with it as sci science. It's not science. Dan Plant, throw that on for me. I love you. My world, there's a whole you lot guys. of people already there. Good morning, Dave. Just, just take a look. We're kind of in the middle of everything here. Up in Encinitas near Swami's. Look at the crowd that has come out here. And everybody has the signs out. And everybody, they, there's a message out here. W what is the main message? We're tired of them telling us what to do. We want our beaches and we want our trails open. We only have 34 cases in Encinitas. We've had no new cases since April 11th. The trails and the beaches are not how people are contagious and getting this disease. So we want them open. We've had enough and we were doing and we were being responsible. We're doing this voluntarily. Great. But to do the, what they've been doing, it doesn't make sense. It's unnecessary. Uh, what about the big crowd? It's, it's kind of a big crowd. It's, uh, it's much organized. 
It went, it exploded. I put together an, an invite and um, people just started sharing it. I had no idea how many people were going to show up. I thought it was just going to be me and my seven friends here. So I had no idea. Um, it's gone crazy. There was another car parade yesterday and I was excited to buy that and I wondered if anybody was going to show up today. But um, you can see that everybody in the town is, is tired of this. I think we have people from Carlsbad and Del Mar and Solana as well. There we go. Yes. My name is Krista Curtis. Yeah. Good morning. Well, I just happened to make this uh, this morning about 45 minutes ago. Pretty basic. First Amendment and the right to peaceably assemble. And it gives the federal government supremacy that you can't infringe on those rights. So the state of California can't infringe on the First Amendment right. That's it. What is your main hope? Uh, what, what I'm seeing right here right now, that we can all just peaceably assemble. That'd be it. Good morning. It's time uh, we took our rights back. This isn't China. This isn't North Korea. This is the United States of America. They need to reopen the country, reopen the beaches, and give us our rights back. It's a big crowd. It's getting bigger every moment. Morning. You're a surfer? I am a surfer, yes. And the ocean is my church, and my civil liberties are being trounced. And that's why I'm out here today to uh, stand up for my and everyone else's civil liberties. We, when you're out there, you kind of are social distancing. Absolutely, absolutely. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You can have three or four bikers going up and down the coast, but they won't let a surfer go out who's 10, 20 yards away from the next surfer. Makes absolutely no sense. And this madness has to stop now. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, with the, what's going on, um, they are little by little. I guess they do have plans to make it, but how fast would you like to see the change? I think it's got to happen by the end of the month. Uh, you know, they've opened uh, the beaches at Santa Cruz. The surfers can surf now in Santa Cruz, so I, I don't understand how they can allow that to happen in Santa Cruz, but we can't surf down here. And it's not, It's listen, it's not just the surfing. It's, it's all of our fundamental rights under the First Amendment are being trounced right now. And we have to have the ability to go to church. We have to have the ability to assemble. And this is nice. They're not giving us a hard time today. We're assembling peacefully. Uh, but this has got to stop. This is insanity. I'd rather not. No worries. No worries. Thank you. Well, a lot of people out here, you guys, if you just take all the way down past Swami's, you can see everybody's gathered. And they all have their signs. And basically, it's all like the ones you see here. It says, open the beach. And it's the message. And they seem to be getting... Seem to be getting a lot of a lot of support from uh, from the people. Open the beach. Open the beach. It's time. We've been on lockdown longer than anybody else. It's time. Well, you're doing social distancing. Oh, you got. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, you can see the scene. What do you think there? You're you're back on the the anchor desk, but you see all the people out here today. Well, there are definitely a lot of people out there very passionate about reopening the beaches and the trails, specifically in in their communities. And this is what we're seeing, Dave, across the country, not just here in San Diego, up in Huntington Beach, uh, in Texas, and other right. multiple states. Uh, within the last 48 hours. Yeah. Yes, okay. well, they, they want these changes right away, that's for sure. When we, So we're going to toss it back to you, but it's pretty packed out here right now. We're, we're right in front of Swami's, you guys. Yeah, I can see that. All right, Dave, we'll see you in a bit. Word that COVID-19 could return to hit us even stronger in winter. That warning comes as several states begin to reopen and local officials discover two facilities with dozens of cases. Here are the latest developments tonight. The number of cases worldwide passes 2.5 million.
Thank you very much, everyone. It's a decision that has enormous consequences amid the coronavirus pandemic. 20 states representing 40 percent of the U.S. population have announced that they are making plans and preparations to safely restart their economies in the very near future. Reopen too soon and risk more lives or stay closed and risk people's livelihoods. Look, people, they want to get back to work. It's a uh, you know, unfortunate, maybe, one way or the other. Both are unfortunate. The U.S. death toll now more than 45,000. CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield issuing a blunt assessment in an interview with The Washington Post. There's the possibility that the assault of the virus on our nation next winter will actually be even more difficult than the one we just went through. And when I've said this to others, they kind of put their head back. They don't understand what I mean. Redfield goes on to say that a second wave of COVID-19 coinciding with flu season would put unimaginable strain on the health care system. Protest groups, many of which support President Trump, say the economic toll of stay-at-home orders outweighs public health concerns. The president pivoting to immigration. I will be issuing a temporary suspension of immigration into the United States. This pause will be in effect for 60 days. This order will only apply to individuals seeking a permanent residency, in other words, those receiving green cards. L.A. officials assure they're working closely with the state to figure out a way to reopen the economy. But for now, we need to continue abiding by the stay-at-home orders. It's imperative that we continue to slow the spread and we continue to take care of each other and not spread infection amongst people who are most vulnerable. However, some less impacted counties in the state are asking the governor if they can start loosening restrictions and reopening their economy safely. The governor responded that based on the data showing numbers rising in the wrong direction, it's too soon. If we pull back too quickly, those numbers will go through the roof. Tomorrow he's going to give us an update on his roadmap to recovery, especially about the progress made with testing. And here are some of the latest numbers across Southern California as far as confirmed cases. Now, the governor says that he is going to need to see more of a leveling off of all of these numbers before things can start to reopen. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Josh Haskell with ABC7. Please go ahead. Yeah, what can you tell us about uh, your reaction to the last stay-at-home order that has taken place in neighboring Ventura County? and? Have you been in communication with them and you, Dr. Ferrer mentioned the weather uh, and how it's going to be a rest, really nice rest of week and weekend. Is there any concern that folks from L.A. County would go to Ventura County because we're hearing that parks and golf courses will be open there? Dr. Ferrer, that's a good question. It's a great question. Um, so, you know, every county is different. And yes, uh, all of all of the different counties in Southern California, we do talk with each other. But everybody's using different data points to make their decisions, and, and that's completely appropriate. Um, I do want to I do want to really beg people uh, who are in LA County, please do not go to Ventura to use their outdoor spaces um, for a couple of reasons. One is you'll overwhelm uh, a county that has that is trying to sort of relax some of their restrictions for their residents and do so in a sensible way, um, and. You could, because you'll be in closer contact with lots of other people, you could inadvertently come back infected yourself and then spread that infection to other people in our county, something we're desperately trying to avoid. Uh, so we, we ask people to have more patience. Uh, as you can tell by the numbers we keep reporting, we have lots of cases here and we have lots of people dying still. Uh, and we're not at the point where we can, at this moment in time, relax uh, our stay-at-home orders, but we are going to relax them, and we're going to relax them as soon as it is sensible for us to lift up restrictions. And like uh, other counties that are moving in that direction, uh, we too want to make sure that people can get outside and enjoy the beauty that L.A. County has to offer, but we do need to do that safely, and we do need to have some pieces in place uh, so that we can protect each other when we do reopen. So I'm really asking people, you know, please hang hang with us a little bit longer. Stay home. Don't go up to Ventura County. Uh, I know they'd appreciate it, and for sure we would appreciate it. Uh
Now at 11, a battle over the beaches as temperatures rise across Southern California. Officials worry about keeping crowds from hitting the beaches during the coronavirus crisis. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. Social distance rules may face their biggest test yet as sunshine and warm temperatures finally hit Southern California, potentially enticing thousands to leave their homes and head outside. New warnings tonight about hitting the beach as the governor finally begins to lift certain restrictions here a look at tonight's latest developments. The governor has cleared the way for elective surgeries to resume in California. Warm weather finally arrives in Southern California, but don't expect to cool down along L.A. County's coastline. Temperatures are expected expected to hit the 90s by this weekend. But restrictions are still in effect at many beaches and popular outdoor spots. Kimberly Chang has more from Huntington Beach, one of the few places allowing limited public access. Several beaches here in Orange County remain open and in the city of Ventura, officials are now allowing exercise and some outdoor activities at beaches and parks. I've been in my house for, I don't know, five weeks now and um, it's mentally challenging. LA City beaches are still closed. As temperatures rise, many will undoubtedly be drawn to coastal communities and recreation areas, leading officials to remind residents to stay at home. Don't go to the beach, it's still closed. Don't go into a park. These will be actually quite hot places um, as well. Uh, if you go to a park these days, if you're going through a trail which are closed. And we see other parts of this region opening their spaces. I know that there'll be, chance, there'll be opportunities for people to think, well, why not here? And we're going to, let's just go out there. I'm gonna ask everyone though, is to exercise that social contract of our own responsibility and to hold ourselves accountable and avoid those non-essential activities. In Orange County, the Board of Supervisors debated whether to close beaches during the heat wave amid concern that people from neighboring counties would crowd their beaches, but several remain open. Seal Beach and Laguna Beach closed their beaches. In Huntington Beach, beaches remained open with the exception of Huntington Harbor beaches, but the pier, beach parking lots, and metered street parking on this part of PCH were shut down. We saw plenty of people along the strand in Huntington Beach Wednesday. In Ventura, there's a soft reopening, giving people access to parks, beaches, a promenade, and pier. Mayor Matt LeVere says hiking, biking, jogging, walking will be allowed, but restrooms, parking lots, playgrounds, picnic areas, and athletic fields are still closed. We have some of the lowest per capita numbers in the entire county, and that's something we're proud of. Uh, and so in that same sense, we also had to balance that with the, the physical and the mental health of our residents. Group gatherings are still not allowed. We're asking people to keep moving. Police and code enforcement will be out in full duty issuing warnings and potential citations. We put a special ordinance in place during this pandemic and it's $500. This Hermosa Beach resident hoping LA will consider a soft reopening too. Like I'm trying to get as healthy as possible. Exercise is one way that I can build my immune system in case I do get sick. Here in Huntington Beach, neighbors say that while the parking lots are closed, they're noticing more people parking on residential streets. Officials are asking for people to avoid traveling to other counties to go to the beaches and recreation areas to reduce the spread. Reporting in Huntington Beach, Kimberly Chang, KTLA 5 News. All right, time now to check in with meteorologist Vera Jimenez for a look at our Heat wave coming our way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, heat wave indeed. Temperatures uh, by the end of the week are going to be, for most of us, somewhere in the 90s, mostly the low to mid 90s. But in some of our communities, especially the low desert, uh, the temps there are going to be quite, quite hot. Mike and Jared, lots of warnings tonight from state and local leaders about not letting your social distancing guard down because of this warm weather that we're having. While they try to bring in some much needed economic relief to the millions of struggling Californians. California's economy continues to crumble. Nearly three and a half million have now filed for unemployment in the state in the last six weeks. But the governor cautions it's still too soon to lift restrictions. I assure you, I'm looking forward to starting up this engine of this economy. He warns people about being drawn outside by the warm weather this weekend. And that means people are prone to want to go to the beaches, parks, playgrounds, and go on a hike. Uh, and I anticipate there'll be a significant increase in volume. Uh, but I also think if there is and people aren't practicing physical distancing, I'll be announcing in a week or so these numbers 
going back up. As the weather warms up, officials are warning people not to flock to the beaches and hiking trails during our heat wave. You could be putting yourself and others at risk. Stay at home orders are still in effect in LA County and beaches are closed due to coronavirus concerns. Kimberly Chang is in Manhattan Beach where some residents are urging city officials to relax the rules and reopen the beaches. Beach residents who support a soft reopening say they don't expect it to happen anytime soon necessarily, but they want LA County officials to start talking about it. We already have right around 500 supporters. Hermosa Beach resident Chris Brown says he and other citizens are urging LA County to partially reopen beaches for exercise. Walking, jogging, beach workouts, swimming, surfing. Several beaches in Orange County are open, and this week officials in Ventura agreed to a soft reopening, which would allow people to head to beaches to work out, but not hang out. They're incorporating physical distancing, and those, those plans are working well in those locations. We'd like to do the same thing here in LA. Getting sunlight, being in open spaces, feeling that freedom um, is vitally important to us right now. Hermosa Beach resident Kevin Sousa is a licensed marriage and family therapist. He understands safety concerns, but based on what he's seeing, believes stress relief is critical right now. Depressive episodes, um, suicidal ideation, um, uh, violence that is coming out of my practice. So we have to weigh one with the other. I, I think that we do need to listen to our medical professionals and do it in the right time. But again, I think having this conversation is essential. LA officials say they're working to reopen when it's safe to do so. And they urge residents to avoid traveling to other counties to go to the open beaches, even though the warm weather is tempting. These Manhattan Beach residents say better safe than sorry. The South Bay is just such a great, beautiful destination for you know people from all over Los Angeles to travel to. Um, so yeah, I think opening the beaches just isn't realistic at this point. I understand what's going on. I understand how many people are being affected by this. So yeah, I think it's just way too soon. Brown says it may be too soon to reopen now, but the conversation needs to start. We are wanting to do this in a carefully managed way and make sure that people are safe out there. LA County beaches, piers, beach bike paths, and trailheads are closed through May 15th. People violating the order can get a ticket. Reporting in Manhattan Beach, Kimberly Chang, KTLA 5 News. All right, time now to check in with meteorologist Vera Jimenez and a look at uh, what we can expect and how hot it was today. Well, look at that, 92 degrees, Shara. That's exactly what it was over downtown Los Angeles. Keep in mind that some spots were actually warmer than that. And yes, flocking to the beach these next couple of days will be a huge temptation, especially if uh, the cooling centers aren't open and available or other public places where people usually go to uh, get shelter from the heat. <laughs> We're right here in front of the governor's mansion in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis. I've come to meet with him to ask him to close the beaches. I just uh, tried to get a meeting with Governor DeSantis to discuss closing our beaches because of the uh, pandemic. I was informed he was unavailable and I could not meet with him today. Uh, I tried to see if I could come tomorrow and they said they didn't know. We drove all the way over here to communicate our concerns that the beaches should be closed and then we're not going to stop until our beaches are closed because this is danger to our community and we urge Governor DeSantis to close the beaches because his executive order he has in place is not enough. Governor, would you please close the beaches for the safety map? Now, dozens of angry protesters taking to the streets Sunday as frustration grows over the economic fallout from the coronavirus. WPTV News Channel 5's Lenny Supal has more on the protests and caravan of cars that roll through South Florida. Palm Beach County officials have already said that they don't believe they'll give the green light for business to reopen until after May 1st. But today we heard protesters say they want those restrictions lifted now. A slow moving crowd of cars rolls down Atlantic Avenue and Delray Beach. The honking horns, a direct signal to officials get America back to work. 
We need to reopen Florida. There's no question that this has to happen. I can give you a million reasons why. There's 22 million Americans right now that are out of work. The coronavirus outbreak prompted schools, restaurants, and non-essential businesses to close nationwide. Any American that has a job and brings and puts food on their, their family's table, that job is essential. The demonstration started in South Miami at 2 p.m. and then they traveled north. Hours later, the conversation still growing day by day. They want restrictions lifted and business back in order. It's selfish. It's selfish. It's ignorant. The protests didn't sit well with everyone. So now would now would be the worst time to reopen everything if that's the case because then the, in, the infectious disease would just continue to spread. Many say they stand with the decision from Palm Beach County leaders keep business closed until a peak in cases is reached. Of course the economy suffer however we have to make sure our workers they are safe first. But questions about the economic recovery are building. This is an absolute abuse of power regardless of the intentions. As another quiet work week begins. The economic impact is part of our way of life. There's no way putting it aside. Is that health? I just don't understand it. According to a new poll released by NBC News and the Wall Street Journal, 60% of Americans prefer keeping current stay-at-home restrictions in place. Meanwhile, officials say that the best way to flatten the curve is to follow the CDC guidelines and stay home, if at all possible. Reporting from downtown West Palm Beach, Lenny Sue Paul, WPTV News Channel 5. Duval's beaches will be open from 6 to 11 in the morning and then 5 to 8 in the evening. St. John's beaches will open from 6 a.m. to noon. Nassau beaches will remain closed. News for Jax is working to keep you safe and informed. We begin with News for Jax reporter Vic Michalucci. He's at Jax Beach. Vic explains how police and firefighters are working to make sure it's a safe experience. Vic? And police, lifeguards, and firefighters were expecting big crowds. You know, it was quiet in the hours before that opening. But right when that clock struck 5 o'clock, we saw people coming from all over just to get some sand in between their toes. Look at the beach right behind me as you look north here in Jacksonville Beach. Towards the pier, you will see thousands of people up and down between Jack's Beach, Neptune Beach, and Atlantic Beach and police and other first responders are making sure they stay safe. So you're gonna be hitting the beach? Oh, you better believe it. I missed it terrible, yeah. 
It's been a long time coming for many. The beaches are back open, partially. After four weeks of keeping people off the sand, Jacksonville Beach Police now have a different task, making sure they use it safely and responsibly. Most people want to do the right thing and, and follow the rules. It's that the few people out there, the one percenters that go out there and there's an issue with them. Sergeant Jason Sharp runs the beach patrols. He and fellow officers now enforcing a new executive order allowing people to hit the shores during certain hours and doing certain activities. This is a chance for us to to start something new and get the beaches back open. If we abide by it, it's good. From now on, Jacksonville area beaches are open from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m., then again from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. for essential activities only. Those include biking, walking, running, swimming, surfing, fishing, and taking the dog out. Beachgoers cannot bring towels, blankets, chairs, coolers, or grills. The rules are the same in Neptune and Atlantic beaches. Pulling it off together, cooperating with the police and with the restrictions is the only way we can keep it open. Since the beaches have been closed, officers have been patrolling 24-7, warning about 20 people a day to get off the sand, police arresting two men who did not listen to their orders. There's a chance to get arrested if you don't listen to us. The beachgoers we spoke to say they will respect the rules, knowing they're in everyone's best interest. I think that if people can just be careful and, and pay attention to their surroundings, then it's really not going to be a big deal. And there were some questions about if you were allowed to be in the water. Well, I just spoke with the chief of police with Jacksonville Beach, and he says, yes, in all three beaches, now they have amended the order to make it clear that people are allowed to be in the water, but they are swimming and surfing at their own risk. As far as public parking, a lot of it is closed if it is east of First Street. So just follow the signs and the cones if you are out in Jacksonville Beach, Neptune Beach, or Atlantic Beach. We're at the Jacks Beach Lifeguard Station. I'm Vic Michalucci, Channel 4, the local station. In groups of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' Reopen Florida Task Force met this morning to discuss what reopening different industries throughout the state may look like. News for Jack's anchor Tarek Miner was on those phone calls. And Tarek, I understand Mayor Lenny Curry played a big role in the decision-making process. He absolutely did, and this is the reason why. Jacksonville was one of the first municipalities to open up their beaches in the country. So mayors from all across Florida and beachside hotel resort owners, they were very interested in hearing from Mayor Curry about how limited access to the beach is working for us in Duval County right now. Now Duval County's model was well received by task force members and what we're doing here in Jacksonville may end up being the model for the entire state. Mayor, Mayor Curry talked about the limited morning and evening hours for beach access and how there have been no real problems for Jacksonville. Mayors from other cities were interested in Duval County's regulations forbidding sunbathing and gathering in groups as well as rules restricting coolers, chairs, blankets and towels. The mayor said, one of the most important things about reopening the beach is the way that the rules are enforced. Just make sure you have a presence. Again, uh, just the presence of police and fire and rescue. Uh, people, I believe, want to behave responsibly. Sometimes it's just to remind them to not congregate, not to stop, and not to get in compact spaces. Uh, and just think through when you do open. Look, people have been in their homes now for weeks, uh, so you're, you're, you're going to get... A lot of people, the moment it opens, trying to get access, um, it, it, and so you just got to figure out locally how to how to manage that. The Reopen Florida Task Force is also hearing from leaders in the food, real estate, retail, transportation, and recreation industries, as well as agriculture, finance, and healthcare officials. Now, all of the recommendations made throughout the week will then be forward to forwarded to an executive committee before the go the governor decides what the state is going to actually implement. At Harrell & Harrell, your health is our top priority. That's why we're offering virtual consultations during these difficult times. Call us to schedule your free consultation. Duval's beaches will be open from 6 to 11 in the morning and then 5 to 8 in the evening. St. John's beaches will open from 6 a.m. to noon. Nassau beaches will remain closed. News for Jax is working to keep you safe and informed. We begin with News for Jacks reporter Vic Michalucci. He's at Jacks Beach. Vic explains how police and firefighters are working to make sure it's a safe experience. Vic? 
And police, lifeguards, and firefighters were expecting big crowds. You know, it was quiet in the hours before that opening. But right when that clock struck 5 o'clock, we saw people coming from all over just to get some sand in between their toes. Look at the beach right behind me as you look north here in Jacksonville Beach. Towards the pier, you will see thousands of people up and down between Jack's Beach, Neptune Beach, and Atlantic Beach. And police and other first responders are making sure they stay safe. So you're going to be hitting the beach? Oh, you better believe it. I missed it terrible. Yeah. It's been a long time coming for many. The beaches are back open, partially. After four weeks of keeping people off the sand, Jacksonville Beach Police now have a different task, making sure they use it safely and responsibly.